Hi, Sam. I'm glad you're back. How are you? I'm doing great. How do you feel about all the safety content that you've learned? I know you learned a lot. Do you have any questions about safety? Yes, there was a lot of safety information. So much to learn about. <laughs> I know. Here at Living Spaces, we value our team members and their partnership in creating a safe work culture. We want to make sure everyone working here is safe. That's why one of the first things we talk about is safety. I agree. Safety is important. Will we continue to talk about safety? It was just a lot of information, and I want to make sure that I know everything I need to know about safety. Of course, we will. What you learned yesterday is just a starting point. Throughout this entire training, safety will continue to be discussed. I know at times this information can be overwhelming, but safety is a team effort, and we will be here every step of the way. Okay, good. Follow me. Let's go clock in for the day. Okay. So as we walk to the machines you need to use to clock in, let's talk about safety. It's important to be aware of your surroundings and be very careful when walking around our distribution center. What are things that I should be on the lookout for? Well, first of all, you'll want to watch where you're stepping to make sure there is nothing on the floor. You will also want to be careful with our machines. Be on the lookout and hear for them. Anytime you hear a honk, look around you to make sure there isn't a machine coming your way. Also, be cautious with the product. We don't want you tripping over it or accidentally stepping on it. Overall, just be careful. Don't take any chances if there is a machine coming your way. Get out of the way and don't assume the operator will stop. You always want to be on alert, especially if you're walking. Do you have any questions? No, I got it. So just be on high alert at all times and watch out where I'm walking. Exactly. We want to ensure your safety and we will do everything we can to make sure you're safe. But we also need your help. I understand. Prior to today, you should have been taught how to clock in. Do you remember? Of course. We can go through the steps again. You'll want to start with selecting in, entering your employee ID, scanning your fingerprint, and waiting until you see the confirmation screen. Got it. I can do it now. Great. Go ahead and clock in. Good job. Now, there is something significant that you must remember about the machine you use to clock in. Do you know what that is? Honestly, I can't remember. That's okay. When you clock out for lunch, you must use the exact same machine you chose to clock in and clock out for your lunch. That's right. They said that during orientation. Exactly. Do you have any questions about clocking in? No, I don't. Okay, well, if you do, please let me know. I'm here to answer any questions you have and help you learn about your job. Thanks. I'll let you know. Okay, well, now that you've clocked in, the next thing you will want to do is to put on your harness. Let's walk over to the lifts and you can put it on there. Here is your harness. Do you remember how to inspect your harness? Uh, do you mind reminding me again? That's okay. I will walk you through it. Before you start with the inspection, you will want to grab the harness by the D-ring, raise it up, and shake it. This will allow the leg straps to fall downward where they need to be. Also, if it's a little jumbled up, shaking it will smooth out the harness so it can hang properly. Next, inspect the impact indicators. On a harness, there are two of them. You can see that it's just webbing folded over and it says impact indicator. It is designed to release when the harness has been subjected to impact loading from a fall. If the impact indicators are not there or they have been exposed, you will want to destroy or discard the harness. Are the impact indicators in good working condition? Yep, they are. Next, you will want to inspect the labels. If you cannot read the labels, you cannot use the harness. Can you read the labels? Yes, I can read them. Now you will want to inspect the hardware of the harness. When inspecting the hardware, you'll start from the top and work your way down. First, look at the back dorsal D-ring. Make sure there are no major bends, cracks, or discoloration. So how does your D-ring look? Looks fine to me. Good. Next, you'll want to check your chest strap. Make sure that the buckle is able to close and stay closed. You will also want to release the tabs on the buckles to make sure they work freely and click when the buckle engages. 
So how's the buckle? Everything works fine. Great. The next thing you'll be inspecting are your adjusters. You will want to make sure you are able to adjust your harness so you can tighten it and loosen it when you need to take it off. Do your adjusters work? Yes, they seem to work. Okay, now let's look at the leg straps. You will want to make sure that the leg straps are able to close and stay closed. Can you tighten up your leg straps or are they able to stay tightened? Yes, they are. Great. Next is the webbing. Look for frayed, cut or broken fibers and stitches. Broken stitches may indicate the harness has been subjected to a fall. Other signs of damages are tears, mold, burns or discoloration from chemicals. Do you see any of this on your harness? No, it looks fine to me. One place I didn't see you inspect was the sub-pelvic strap. Underneath here gets a lot of wear, so be sure to check all of your stitching on your harness. So, how does your sub-pelvic strap look? It's looking pretty good. That's great to hear. If for some reason you ever were to run into a problem with your harness and find something is wrong with it, immediately report it to your supervisor and find a new harness, okay? Okay. Do I have to inspect my harness every time I put it on? Yes, you do. It's for your safety. Even after I come back from breaks? Yes. Because anytime you go on break or take a lunch, you need to remove your harness and place it over the arm of your lift. Why is that? Because this signifies to others that this lift is being used and ensures that no one takes your lift. Oh, I see. That makes sense. So, do you have any other questions? Not now. So, just to review, you'll want to inspect the labels, hardware, impact indicators, and the webbing. Would you like me to go over the inspection again, or do you think you're ready to inspect the harness on your own? Wow, that's perfect. You inspected it correctly. I'm glad to hear that. I thought I wasn't going to remember everything I needed to inspect, but I got it. Yes, you did. So, now that we've inspected your harness and found that it is in perfect working condition, it is time to put it on. Can you put it on, or would you prefer I walk you through the steps of putting it on? Could you walk me through the steps, please? Not a problem. First of all, you'll want to make sure you have nothing in your pockets or hanging from your belt. I have nothing in my pockets or hanging from my belt. Great. You'll want to hold the harness by the dorsal D-ring. Put on the shoulder straps and locate the leg straps. Next, secure them by tightening them around each leg. You will want them tight enough to where it's tight to put two fingers between you and the leg straps. Next, Adjust the shoulder straps as needed so that the D-ring is in between your shoulder blades and then finally secure your chest strap across your chest tight enough so it doesn't go up or down your chest and stay centered. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Great. Can you show me how you put it on? That's correct, you got it right. Also, it's important to know that now that you have your harness on, it is required that it remains in a ready to hook up status. What does it mean to have it in a ready to hook up status? It means that you shouldn't walk around with your chest strap unhooked or with the leg straps not tightened or with your straps buckled without the legs being attached. Got it. It needs to stay on the exact way I have it on right now. Exactly. Okay, now that you've inspected your harness and have it on, it's time to find a lift. So, here at our distribution center, we have a total of four different lifts. We have two Raymond lifts, a small one and a big one. Also, we have two crown lifts, a small one and a big one as well. They both have dead man pedals and safety guards. During equipment certification class, we covered the differences between the two lifts. And would you like to review those differences? 
Okay, let's review. I'll start with our Raymond lift. We have two different types of Raymond and both have a joystick. One of them is a small Raymond. When you're operating this lift, you cannot under any circumstances enter a big aisle. The second type of Raymond lift is big. When you're using this lift, you cannot enter a small aisle. Both of our Raymond lifts are also wire guided. So in order to accelerate this lift, you must do a forward only motion. The arm for the Raymond, which is located on the side, must be lifted before getting on and off your lift. But it must always be down when you're operating the lift. Do you have any questions? Yes, what does wire guided mean again? Only our Raymond lifts are wire guided. Wire guided is an electromechanical system that controls your lift steering. This system frees you from steering responsibilities in very narrow aisles. As soon as you enter the aisle, you have to click the button found on your lift so you can lock the lift into the magnetic strips. These magnetic strips are guiding your lift, which means you can't leave the aisle without pushing the release button to unlock the lift from the strip. Any other questions? No other questions. So, are you ready to answer some questions about our Raymond lifts? Yeah. You did so well, you got them all right. Now, for our crown lifts, we have two different crown lifts. Both of them are rail guided. They are not wire guided. It is important to know that when you're operating on small crowns, you can go into big lift aisles or bulk aisles, and when you're operating on big crowns, can under no circumstances enter a bulk aisle. In order to accelerate, you must do a twist grip motion. Would you like me to repeat that or are you ready to answer some questions? I got them right. Yes, you did. I'm so proud of you. One of the key things to remember is never to use a small lift to enter a big lift aisle. Got it. Now, as a recap, you learned how to clock in, inspect and put on your harness and the differences in our lifts. It's time to choose a lift. Since you're new, we will start you off with a small lift. Does this work for you? Looks good to me.